Take your joy for the fucking day, Lord. Hallelujah. Yet I was here. Efata. Yeji waya. Efata. Waya ya na.
together unto the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Our God is good and all the time. Amen. We want to thank our God. Hallelujah. Yeah, please take your seats. We'll be back shortly. We'll rise up shortly. Let's take a scripture from Joshua chapter 21 verse 44. It says, and the Lord gave them rest round about according to all that he swore unto their fathers. And there stood not a man of all their enemies before them. The Lord delivered all their enemies into their hand. Amen. Today we want to pray in the matter of thank you, Father, for giving us rest round about since the beginning of the year in the name of the Lord Jesus. The Lord has given us rest. And we want to thank him. Just be on your feet. Begin to bless the name of God. Begin to thank him. Begin to exalt his holy name for the rest that he has given us from the very beginning of this year. Even in this month, in this week, it is the Lord's peace, it is the Lord's rest. There has been our portion, and that is why we are here today. Just begin to bless His holy name, just exalt His holy name. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Lord, we lift on high your holy name, O oh God. High above any other God for your rest, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you for your peace, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you for your covering, in the name of the Lord Jesus. It is you alone, O oh God, that Father, we can lift, O oh God, as praise unto. Not to any other God, not to any other tree, not to any other river, O oh God. But you who made heaven and the earth, in the name of the Lord Jesus, you have given us this peace. And that is why, Father, O oh God, we have every reason, O oh God, to lift up our hands, to lift up our voices, O oh God, and say that, Father, thank you, and say that glory to your holy name. In the name of the Lord Jesus, glory to you, O oh God. Hallelujah to your holy name. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we bless you, Father. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We exalt you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, that Father, O oh God, above all, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we have that rest. Oh God, because you alone give to us 
In the name of the Lord Jesus, be magnified, O God. Be glorified, O God. Even in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this rest. Thank you for this peace. Thank you, Father, O God, that the enemies, O God, could not overcome us. But because of the blood, in the name of the Lord Jesus, you've given us victory. In the name of the Lord Jesus, your name be praised. Your name be exalted. Your name be magnified. Even in the name of the Lord Jesus. Glory to your holy name. Even in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Put your hands together unto the Lord and take your seat. Amen. Shortly we shall be standing to our feet and then pray for our beloved country, Ghana. In John chapter 16, verse number 8, I read, And when he comes, he will convince the world concerning sin unrighteousness and judgment. I take it again. And when he comes, he will convince the world concerning sin, unrighteousness and judgment. Our prayer is that spirit sweep, sweep across the nation with a strong wave of conviction and confession. Leading to massive ingathering of souls nationwide. Again, Holy Spirit, sweep across the nation with a strong wave of conviction and conversion, leading to massive ingathering of souls nationwide. In Jesus' name, let's stand to our feet and begin to pray for our beloved nation, Ghana. Lift up your voice and pray for Ghana. That God will convict the nationals, the citizenry. God will convict them. God will convict them. God will convict them and bring them to the serving knowledge of Christ. Lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Pray for Ghana. Pray for Ghana. Pray for Ghana. Pray for Ghana that the Holy Spirit will convict the nationals. The Holy Spirit will convict the citizenry. Conviction. Conviction. Pray for Ghana. Conviction. We need that nation to be transformed. We need a nation to be transformed. Pray for Ghana. Pray for Ghana. Pray for Ghana. Lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice and pray. Lian Talaboshata. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. In Ezekiel chapter 36, verse number 26, the Bible says that I will create in you a new heart, and I will put into them a new heart. Lian Talapaya. And I will remove, I will take away the stony heart, and give them a heart of flesh. Lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Pray to God. Pray to God. This same Jesus. This same Jesus. Acts 1 loving. This same Jesus. Pray to him. Pray to him. Pray to him. We are praying for conviction. We are praying for conviction. We are praying for conviction. For Ghana. For the citizenry. For the nationals. We are praying for conviction. That the Holy Spirit will convict us and convert people, leading them to massive ingathering of souls nationwide. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. We thank you for convicting your people, for convicting your country, and leading them to massive ingathering of souls. In the name of Jesus, we, th we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Hallelujah. We shall be praying for Closac, the leadership and the membership of Closac. And we shall be taking our scripture from Deuteronomy chapter 1, the verse number 11. One of the last words of Moses to Joshua and the people of Israel. He says, the Lord God of your fathers make you a thousand times so many more as you are and bless you as he has promised you. So we say that, Father, we decree that you will supernaturally multiply the leadership and membership of Closac a thousand times more between now and the end of the year. Kindly stand to your feet, lift up your voice, and pray for numerical increase of Closac leadership and the membership in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for numerical increase. 
we pray for an overflow by the close of this very year by December the whole place shall be full there shall be an overflow in the mighty name of Jesus there shall be souls from the north from the south from the east and the west there shall be overflow in this house in the mighty name of Jesus numerical increase numerical increase there shall be blessings breakthroughs over us in the mighty name of Jesus as we increase in number the breakthroughs shall also increase blessings shall increase in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus this last quarter of the year the Lord shall increase us all around the Lord shall give us rest all around testimonies shall abound in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus as long as we are part and parcel of the close fellowship we pray for increase we pray for increase we pray for blessings we pray for breakthroughs in the mighty name of Jesus may the Lord God of our fathers make us a thousand times more may the Lord God of our fathers make us a thousand times more may we multiply may we increase on every side of our lives as members of close in the mighty name of Jesus this fellowship shall grow this fellowship shall grow this fellowship shall grow in the mighty name of Jesus across oh God in the mighty name of Jesus let us increase numerically let your blessings overflow let there be an overflow of blessings oh God in this last quarter of the year in this last quarter of the year in the mighty name of Jesus multiply us a thousand times more Lord multiply us a thousand times more in the mighty name of Jesus we decree and declare oh God increase that numerically let your blessings abound on every side of our lives as members of the close fellowship in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus oh Lord we crown to you this very afternoon nobody can do it it is only you who can increase us it is only you who can bless us we pray in the mighty name of Jesus we pray in the mighty name of Jesus any evil one standing at the entrance of our blessings at the entrance of our breakthroughs we come against it in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus we pray with thanksgiving hallelujah put your hands together unto the Lord and comfortably take your seats hallelujah shortly we'll be going into our personal supplication and we'll be putting our request before God you are going to be asking the Lord you are going to be knocking so that that door shall be open unto us before we go into our personal supplication we'll be taking our uncle's scripture from Isaiah 14 24 and it reads the Lord of hosts has sworn saying surely I have thought so shall it come to pass and as I have purpose so shall it stand in the mighty name of Jesus the purpose of God shall stand in the life of someone today in the name of Jesus. Shall we be upstanding on our feet as we put our requests before God, as we put our heart desires before him, believing that he is the one who is capable of doing it. That concern in your heart, put it before God, that desire, put it before God this moment. Speak to him concerning that issue that pertains to you. Speak to him concerning that issue that you are looking unto him for. Speak to him concerning that issue that you know only him can do. Talk to him this moment concerning that healing that you are believing for for someone. Concerning that breakthrough. Concerning that forward movement that you are looking unto God for. Concerning that financial breakthrough. Concerning that family breakthrough. Concerning that family deliverance. Speak to the Lord concerning it this afternoon in the mighty name of Jesus. Knock on the door of God this afternoon that it may be opened unto you. Ask of him this afternoon that it will be done unto you. Speak to him this moment. That grace that you need to serve him. Ask for that grace this moment. Ask for the grace this moment. Ask for that healing this moment. Ask for that breakthrough this moment. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, he said unto you shall all men come. Father, Lord, we have come unto you today because we know you are the almighty God. You are the all-capable God. 
You are the I am that I am. And you are the only one that is capable of solving our needs. Father Lord, grant unto us our desires this afternoon. Father Lord, hear us from the throne room of grace this afternoon and answer us according to your will. Father Lord, let your perfect will concerning every individual here. Father Lord, that perfect will concerning every family represented here. Father Lord, let it come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus that at the end we will stand to give glory unto your name and say this is what you have done. Father Lord, we thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we are prayed. Amen. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. Somebody put your hands together. Come on. Oh, Brian, I'm not going to be able to sum up what I'm going to say. Yeah. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. Once again, I want to welcome you to this afternoon's fellowship. I believe our week has been glorious, but God is going to take us to a higher place in Jesus' name. This month, we want to be tackling or speaking on stewardship for that will provoke breakthroughs in our lives. Hallelujah. And uh, we have the privilege to have prof with us to be Speaking with us regarding financial stewardship for financial prosperity. Hallelujah. Financial breakthrough. So, Prof will be taking us today, next week, and then we need to get hold of God's mindset and wisdom from that angle. And so, we are privileged to have him today with a hand clap. Why don't we welcome God's servant, the Prof himself. Let's do it better for them. Hallelujah. Amen. Unya me tufu, ushe yesu da. Wabata kese no, udibo ye humba. Hey, wabata kese no, uka ye humba.
don't know whether you know how to sing. Mi mami, mi revi, onya mi a, onye mo, fereba, mani mo, oh, mi mami, mi revi, onya mi a, Financial stewardship for financial breakthrough. First of all, let me let... Yeah, I like the organ. First of all, let me let you understand what we mean by stewardship. You know, as a professor, some, anytime we are sharing a word, you by all means take some notes home. So, note it. So, the definition of stewardship that is going to guide our topic for today... Stewardship is a job of supervising or taking care of something. So, the thing that's not belongs to you, but you are supervising it and taking good care of it, that is stewardship. Now, what is Christian financial stewardship? Christian financial stewardship means our money is seen as belonging to God and is God's money. It is from God. And as disciples, we should use it for the purpose of God and glory. Believers in Christ, as it's written in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, the Bible said that in the beginning God created heaven and earth. What it tells us is that everything in this world was created by God and it is for God. Everything in this world is created by God and it is for God. There is nothing that is for you. Nothing in this world, including your own money. Including your finances, your assets, everything in this world, it is not for you. So sometimes, when we, we Christians, we sometimes make mistake. This is for me, this is for me, this is for me. No, there is nothing in this world. After all, when you were coming to this earth, you came to this earth with nothing. So you came to this earth with nothing, but everything that you have acquired in this world was there and it God who mandated it that it shall come to your hands one day. And so you are steward to everything that you hold. You are a steward to everything in this world that you come across to. Either your own assets, your children, your finances, your books, even your own knowledge. You are just a steward in three. You can say, Oh, your face of war. So, one thing that we, be, we should be mindful of is that we should not all the time be boasting that, Hey, this is for me. This is for me. Because that thing can leave your hands within a twinkle of an eye. If only you don't take care of it, it belongs to God. 
There is nothing that belongs to you. The money that you think you have, it is not for you. God has given it to you for a purpose. And what God has given to you, the money that God has given to you, it is for you to use it judicially for mankind purpose. And so everything that comes to you, it is not for you. It is for the betterment of the world. So when you have money, the money comes to you for a purpose. So that is what it is behold on Christians for us not to be too stingy. Because whatever is belong, whatever that has come to you does not belong to you. That's why the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. Why? Because the thing is not for you. So when you hold it, remember it might leave. How many times have you found out yourself that you may have a, a, a very fat bank account but before he realized the money will go shoom, without you even knowing how you use the money for because you thought that the money was for you. One of my mentors used to tell me and used to say that money has wings and money does not want to stay at one place. Money wants to go and come back. But depending on how you send the money, that is how the money will come. If you, if you do not send the money well, the money will come and it will be in short. But when you send the money well, it will come bountifully. Hallelujah. Amen. In Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 14, the Bible says that the Lord God, the Lord your God belongs the heaven and the highest thereof. The earth and everything in it. So everything we hold now belongs to God. Your own dress that you have acquired belongs to God. It does not belong to you. Anything that you use your finance to take or have for yourself, it does not belong to you. It belongs to you and the world. Because the Bible says that let us make man in our own image. And after the creation, God said that let man have dominion over the world. What does it mean? It means that as we are having dominion over the world, the whole world is for us and God needs the world to be flourish. And so if you alone acquire something without the glorification of God and then without using it well, then it might not come to you. In the book of Psalm 24, verse 1, the Bible said that the earth is the, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. This earth that we see does not belong to us. It does not belong to us. It belongs to God. And everything including the sun that you are able to acquire, the sun that you create for your own building, it belongs to God. Hallelujah. Amen. So we cannot be a steward of God's resources if we ourselves want to own it. How can we be, or how can we demonstrate that we are a steward of God if we want to own it? So everything is for yourself. We are not even ready to give it to mankind. We are not ready to even expand it and give it to human beings. We are not even ready to give. Hallelujah. In the book of Genesis chapter 2. Pastor, next week I'll have another chance there. Okay, then that's, that's good. <laughs> In the book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 15. The Bible says that the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden. To work in it and to keep it. So, the reason why you were brought on this earth is for you to also help to keep the earth. Help us to keep it. So, we are just stewards in this world. Everything that we do, look, there are thousands of people who might even be better than you. But you are the one that God chose you to even be appointed to a particular position. So, when you get there, you should know that you are just what? A steward. Oh, yes, so. Everything, every step that you take, especially, you see, most of the time, the Bible says that 
we should not be a lover of money. So what does it tell us? Money in itself can influence us in so many ways. But when the money comes, we are supposed to stretch it also for mankind's purpose because we are just stewards. We are just stewards. Because when you hold it, I can tell you that the money will not come to you. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 23, the Bible said that whatever you do and work heartfully, ask for God and not for man. Everything that you are doing, everything that comes into your hand, know that you are working for God. Now, in the book of Titus chapter 1, verse 7, permit me, I'm rushing you because I want you to get the points that I'm trying to let you understand. In the book of Titus chapter 1, verse 7, the Bible said that for an overseer as God's steward must be above reproach and must not be arrogant. Sometimes, Christian, when we get small money and we are working, we think that for us, everything is, be, everything is for us. So, if you are not careful, we allow arrogance to step in. Now, let me let you understand one thing. Whenever money comes into your hands, as I've told you, know that you are just a steward. Because if you are not careful, that money will leave your hands. That is why the Bible said that we should feed at his people. That's why even the Bible said, I love a cheerful giver. Anybody that gives, know that it comes bountifully. And especially when we have money and we are able to expand it and do the service of God most, uh, most of the time, God rewards us because God realizes that at least whatever we have, we are able to acknowledge that it is he who gave us. And because we have acknowledged that he is the one who has given to us, he is able to multiply it for us because God also will see and realize that indeed it is good for us. Let me share with you a story as I, 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 I close. You know, I quite remember as a young Christian, I know so, uh, uh, some of you came for my uh, father's 40 days uh, observation, my father's 40 days death observation. And uh, I can tell you, some of you got to know my hometown. You know, I grew up at a place called Nkoko. And as a young boy, I realized that indeed I, I was fortunate to uh, become, let's say, repent, uh, uh, become a full Christian at the age of eight years. So I, I, I saw that before I can touch the eye of God, I must demonstrate something. Hallelujah. And so what, what was I doing as, as, as a young boy? You know, what I used to do is to even go to farm. I will sometimes farm. When I get small money, I will farm and give it back to the church. You know, in the olden days, harvest was something which was crucial. And it, 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 it was for full staffs. I mean, you have to donate full staffs to the church and that is where they will sell. And when the church sell it, then they will get money. I used to farm, a whole farm, and give it to the church. Hello? This was the time that I was preparing myself for a breakthrough because at that time, farming and giving to the church was like also donating to the church in, in this modern world that we say money. So I was donating to the church. I remember at a convention, pastors called me and said, why are you this boy, small boy, you are doing all this thing? I said, because I know that you have told me that giving is of essence. And for me to have a financial breakthrough, I, have, I must acknowledge and know that everything that comes into my hands, it is not for me, but it is for the glorification of God. So at every point in time, any time something comes to your, your hand, know that it is never for you. You are just a steward. Oh, but it is for the glorification of God. Let us be mindful of everything that comes into our hands. Because that is the beginning of our financial breakthrough. Brethren and believers in Christ, when we come closer to God, we must know that God exists. And every step that we take, because he has appointed us to be steward, he is ready to bless us. And he is ready to make us rich. And he is ready to make us worthy. These are some of the significant things we must be mindful of. Because God said that he will bless us. That we will not even have room to store. He is ready to bless us. If only we will know and acknowledge that whatever comes to our hands, no matter how little it is, 
it is for the glorification of God and it is not for us. In the mighty name of Jesus, shall we be on our feet? intro for you from Prof. Hallelujah. Next week he's still going to be here. We are touching on finance. But you must understand that if you are not using your money to serve God, you will serve that money. Praise the Lord. If you don't use your money to serve God, you will serve the money. And that's what we, 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 we call mammon. Praise the Lord. The devil is a liar. <laughs> Praise the Lord. If we don't use our money to serve God, we will what? We will serve the money. And so what it means is that then the God of mammon, that's why Jesus said you, you, you can't serve God and mammon. The God of mammon is manipulating you. So the money is to serve God and the interest of his kingdom. To be a blessing to mankind. Hallelujah. Amen. Just by the way, anyway, Prof, the Lord bless you. We'll be waiting for you next week and the upper week. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Shall we rise up on our feet as we, we declare that this weekend is blessed for you? Amen. I decree that legions of angels will keep charge over you and your household. Amen. I speak the covering of the blood of Jesus over you. We cancel every negative verdict of the enemy against you and your household in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare that joy and gladness will fill your habitation in Jesus' mighty name. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Uh, on Tuesday will be Pastor Bayo's birthday. So, on behalf of the October Bonds, Pastor Bayo has brought a birthday cake for all October Bonds and all the congregation to join him to cut the cake. So, Bant, you give us a happy birthday song. October Bonds, please come around. And those who will be pumping the champagne, we have Henry, Doji, uh, yeah. Raymond. Um, happy birthday. Oh yes. Uh -huh. Oh yes. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Pastor Bayo. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Uh huh. Happy birthday to you. Let's be upstanding, please. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we cast this cake onto your hands. We cast the whole October bonds also onto your hands. As you, God, you have added another year or going to add more years to their lives. Father, we know that we know and, that, and we believe that you, God, you have already blessed them and blessed them. As, Father, we cut this cake, let the sweetness of this cake transform and transfer into their lives and their entire family. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Professor Siama. We call upon Mary to join in the popping of the champagne. Mary, please do the uh, pasta de anise. Champagne, Please, can we request we are popping champagne? Or oh, it's not on this forum. <laughs> Closak. Closak by So beautiful. One mama come I told me yeah, told me yeah. One mama in summer, say me ne, me ne me. Every day I know ma, tampe. Yet I was you. If I think of your mind, tell me. If you may be seen in that, I was you. Missy, one mama come out, Tommy, yeah. My 
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Remain blessed. Have a glorious weekend.